Hello, my name is Fly Lady Cat. I am a professional Fly Lady mentor with FlyLadyPremium.com. Um, that means that I have people who pay me to be their mentor to help them develop systems and organization and peace in their life. And it not, it's not just in their home. It could be in their work. It could be um, in some things that they want to pursue, some um, talents that they have, different things. So that's what I do. Now I also have a YouTube channel just for you. It is free and I've taken the information that you can find on flylady.net which is the original um, website that Marla Silly, the Fly Lady, established. And I've taken it and I'm interpreting it for you from a mentor's point of view. There are more than one mentor. There are, you know, 20 mentors. Uh, that are professional mentors with FlyLadyPremium.com but um, and we're international but I'm here for you giving you my perspective and you'll find that everyone has a little different take because we're all human so here's what I'm talking about in my videos um, I had one of my friends she's a head teller at the bank I used to work at hi Chris and she said, Kat, I've been watching your videos. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I thought, hmm, maybe these people haven't been with me from the beginning. I better make a video giving them the basics in a nutshell. So let me start from the beginning. Number one, there's a link right there. And it says, shine your sink. If you have never done that, that is the number one step. Stop this video now. Click the link. Watch the video. You'll need an hour to shine your sink. You will not be scrubbing for the whole hour. You'll mainly be waiting. But go ahead and do that first. When you're done, come back. It doesn't matter if it's tomorrow. Just come back and then you can watch this video. And from then on, apply the information that you learn in this video to all the ones in the future. Because I make a video every day, either for a payroll fly baby, someone who works, or an at-home fly baby, someone who keeps house and stays home. So depending on what you are, you can watch the video every day and it tells you exactly what to do every day. But I will be referring to things that you'll need in this video. So after you shine your sink, we're going to do three things and we're going to take time to establish these things. I call it the three layer cake. The bottom, the number one thing is your routines. Just like you've seen people spinning spinning dishes, spinning plates on those wobbly little sticks and circuses and things, and the plates are going like this. Once you get those plates balanced, then you're ready to go to step two, which is, so that's routines. Step two of our cake, the second layer, whoops, this way, the second layer of our cake is basic weekly plans. So once you feel comfortable with your routines, it may take you a week, it may take you two weeks, it may take you three weeks. Then you'll step into basic weekly plan. Basic weekly plan are just things that we do every week normally, but it's kind of got some organization so you don't accidentally skip something. And then once you get that down for a week or two, then we'll start in zones. Zones just means that we've taken your home and split it into areas to focus on for decluttering first, and then once the clutter is gone, for deep cleaning. And we don't work long hours. We don't work six hours cleaning something like I used to do. Um, we try to focus for 15 minutes. Can you do that? I think you can. I've had so many positive results and so many positive responses from fly babies out in, in YouTube land. I know you two can do this. You can. So let's start with the routines. Need, you'll need a paper and a pencil. So go ahead and stop the video and go get paper and pencil. Come back and then make the list. Okay, stop the video. Welcome back. Okay, now we're going to write down our morning routine. This is what you'll do every morning before the family is up. You can do this. If you don't do it before the family is up, you'll be running behind all day long. If you can get it done before the majority of the family is up, you'll be in control. Almost like that example that people always give, when the oxygen masks drop down in the airport, in the airplane, put yours on first before you apply yours to your child. It's the same thing. Once you get your morning routine done, you've been taken care of, then you can gleefully, well, maybe not gleefully, but you can happily help the others without feeling that inside whininess because you didn't get to take care of yourself. So here's the morning routine. Don't freak out. All right. Make your bed. Brush your teeth. Wash your face. Apply some moisturizer. If you wear it, put on a little bit of makeup. Get dressed to your shoes. Wipe out the sink. 
swish the toilet. Yes, swish the toilet. Go to the kitchen and put your clean dishes away, either from the dish rack if you had to hand wash them or from the dishwasher. Make some coffee or breakfast. Ta-da! Now you'll notice on flylady.net that that's not all that's in the morning routine. And it doesn't have to be all that's in yours. You may shower in the morning. You may add your Bible reading in the morning. You may do yoga in the morning. Some people do all kinds of things in the morning. Don't make it too long, though. The one I just gave you takes 25 minutes. So if you wake up at 7, you can be out the door at 7.30 if you don't have any kids to deal with. That's how quick it is. All right. Um, now, the next part, of when you look at flylady.net, they've just got two routines, morning routine and evening routine. But the morning routine includes some of the things I'm going to have broken down into different routines because that's, that's your morning routine. Now I'm going to have your laundry routine. I'm going to put a link up there for how to do the laundry. Okay, so stop and write that, or just know that link is in this video when you need to do laundry. But the bottom line of laundry is laundry is not done until it's folded and put away. Putting clothes in the washing machine and moving them to the dryer is not washing clothes. You haven't done the laundry. The machines have done the laundry. You don't do the laundry until they come out of the dryer and you have to have to do something besides mechanically move things. So somebody saying they've done the laundry for you and taking out the clean laundry and dumping it on the bed or dumping it on the couch is not very helpful, is it? Because they haven't done the laundry. Don't take, this is my rule, this is a cat rule. Don't take things out of the dryer until you're ready to hang them up or fold them and put them away. Don't. You can always warm them up again. Don't take them out because you'll end up with a Mount Foldmore. So then we'll have a whole mountain range, Mount Washmore and Mount Foldmore. And honestly, I think Mount Foldmore is sadder because you've spent um, effort moving uh, your laundry around and, you, and you've spent laundry detergent and you've spent electricity and water to, to achieve nothing but to have the dog lay on the clean clothes and you have to wash them again. So don't take the clothes out until you're ready to fold them and put them away or hang them up and put them away and don't do big loads. Again, watch the video. Okay, that's two. That's routine number two. Routine number three is um, your paper routine. You won't see paper routine in the Fly Lady routines, but it comes from actually a weekly plan item called the Weekly House Blessing where they have to deal with paper, but I'm taking it here because I found that there are lots and lots of fly babies who have paper clutter all over their house. So when I say paper routine, what it means is I want you to have all the paper that you can find in your house, just have a paper hunt and, and put it all in a stack. And it doesn't matter if it's a two foot Dr. Seuss crookedy stack, okay, but just put it in a stack Keep that stack contained in a basket or in a box or something. You might have to have two baskets. You might have to have a stack in every room. I don't care as long as it's all in one stack and there's no more paper in your clutter. And then every day, Monday through Saturday, you go through one inch. An inch is this part right here from here to here. That's an inch. You go through one inch of paper and you make three, one of three decisions. One. Is it shred or garbage? If it is, it goes in a shred or garbage pile. Is it uh, something I need to do something with? Is it an action item? Do I need to call the doctor, call the teacher, um, pay a bill, um, discuss something with someone? Those are action items. They go in your inbox. If you don't have an inbox, go to the dollar store, spend one dollar on a plastic inbox, Put it on your on your countertop or on your desk or somewhere where you can keep your your action items for the week. And then the third thing is is it something that needs to be filed? If it needs to be filed, it also goes in your action box because when we do our weekly action home bless it, I mean our weekly basic weekly plan. Sorry, when we do our basic weekly plan, once a week we handle these things, so it's not going to be a big problem. Okay. So that is the paper routine. Every day, one inch of paper. Just take an inch and go through it. Know that your brain is quicker at making decisions and more correct at making decisions than your emotions. Your emotions argue with your brain. So if your brain says in a nanosecond, trash, and then your heart comes in and says, well, wait a minute. 
I might need to keep that. That's really cute. Johnny made that in first grade. Or, oh, I'm scared. I need to keep that because I'll never be able to get that again. And, you know, the insurance company will, will say they never paid it if they, that's not true, right? None of that's true. Use your brain, not your emotions, all right? Now, I understand if grandmother sent you a card and she's dear and it's a precious thing and you want to keep it, then that requires keeping. If it's something you're going to look at, you can keep it. If it's something you're going to enjoy, you're the CEO. You get to keep it. Just don't keep everything because if you can't pull it out and enjoy it regularly, you don't need to keep it. Why keep something for five years in a box, in a corner that you don't even know is there? taking up valuable real estate in your home. So use your brain, make a quick decision, and do it. All right, that's the paper routine. Along with the paper routine, the reason I do it six days a week is because that's the days the mail runs. So when you check the mail, I want you to do the same thing. Is it shred or garbage? Is it action required? Or is it does it need to be um, filed? And in your inbox it goes. Okay. The majority of the trash in your house has been regurgitated from your mailbox into your home. The rest of it comes from little kids' elementary school papers. That's what it does. And we'll talk about that in some future videos. But this is your paper routine. So go through your mail, mail every day. Go through your paper every day. If you go through an inch of paper every day, in a week you'll go through six inches. In a month you'll go through two feet. Right? In four months you can go through eight feet. I don't know how much paper you have but it'll go away. Inch by inch, it's a cinch, okay? Yard by yard, it's hard. Inch by inch, it's a cinch, you can do this. All right, that's your paper routine. So we've got a morning routine, a laundry routine, a paper routine. Now the next routine we have comes right after dinner. It's called the after dinner routine, and here are the steps. Dishes in the dishwasher or in the hot water to wash in the sink. Um, then wash the dishes, wash the pots and pans, wipe the stove, wipe the countertop, shine your sink, sweep your floor, and wipe down the table or the baby's high chair. Now, I don't want you to think you have to deep clean all this stuff. You do not. We're just blessing here. Deep cleaning comes later. All we're doing is wiping the crumbs off the counter. We are not getting out the spray and cleaning it. You can if you can do it quickly. But you can't if it's going to be a big deal. It's not about cleaning anymore. It's about your family. It's about loving yourself. Fly Lady. Fly stands for F-L-Y. Finally loving yourself. So it's not about cleaning the house. That is not our focus. Although we will have a clean house. All right. So you're just doing a quick wipe. Unless it's chicken juice. Now if it's chicken juice, you have to get in there and get that up. Get that up all right. But other than that, give it a quick wipe. The same with your stove, give it a quick wipe. The same with the table, if the children ate at the table and there's sloppiness all over there, give it a quick wipe. For sweeping, you're just sweeping where you see stuff. A little bit of onion, a little bit of flour. If the dog hasn't already come to eat it, sweep it up. That's it. You don't have to sweep the whole floor. We don't have to steam mop. We're not going crazy here. We're doing this really quick, right? So it's pots and pans, dishes, sink, counter, floor. That's it. Now, here's my number one rule about the after dinner routine. Anyone who can walk and carry a dish can participate. They carry their dish to the sink, they scrape the remnants out, they rinse the plate, and they put it in the dishwasher or put it in the hot soapy water. They can even wash it. They can, imagine that. A little child, four years old, can wash her plate and rinse it and put it in the rack, wash her cup and rinse it and put it in the rack, wash her fork and rinse it and put it in the rack. High five, good job, baby. And she's going to think, I know how to wash dishes. And it's going to make her or him feel really important and part of the society of your family, All right? Okay, next, we're going to do our before bed routine. Now, your before bed routine consists of, number one, deciding how many what time you need to go to sleep if you're to get seven to eight hours of sleep. Proven scientifically that you need seven to eight hours for your body to recover. When you sleep, that's when your body heals itself. 
rejuvenates itself. You feel good in the morning because you've had your sleep. So I want you to decide what time you're going to go to sleep. Then I want you to look and see what's going on tomorrow. Are you, um, do you have a dentist appointment? Uh, do one of the kids have something they have to do? See, why you're looking, the reason you're looking at that is to determine what you need to wear tomorrow because the second thing you're going to do is pick out your clothes for tomorrow. And you're going to say, well, I wear the mom uniform. I wear jeans and a t-shirt. You know, that's fine. If that makes you happy and you're comfortable in that, that's fine. Lay it out and have it ready to go along with your flip-flops if that's what you're going to wear and a little cute pair of earrings. But you know what? If you're thoughtful about your clothing, um, I think you're going to look a little more presentable. You know, I love Jennifer Scott, and she is the uh, Daily Connoisseur, one of the first video uh, YouTube people I watched. In fact, I believe that Jennifer was the very first one I watched. Before Kimmy Hughes, who is the wonderful, she's in her apron, my dear friend, and one of my mentees. Um, but, but Jennifer Scott talks about the 10 item wardrobe and you'll find if you have less clothes, you'll take better care of them. It doesn't have to be 10 items, but if you want to, it's a great idea. I'll link her below for you. Okay. If you want to go watch her videos on the 10 item wardrobe, uh, but dressing well, doesn't mean you have to dress expensively. Doesn't mean it, it can't be a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you're dressing a little better and you look a little better and you know what's so wonderful about that is when you pass yourself in the mirror and you get a glimpse of that stranger you'll say who is that cute girl it's me oh and it's nice it's good for your well-being it's good for your I don't know your psyche instead of you know your hair's in a messy bun which is cute too but you know what I'm saying you're just no makeup no earrings blah blah or you haven't even brushed your teeth all day because I've been there and done that too, and I know how that feels. It feels so much better to be in control. It's just a better feeling. You're flying the plane. You're not riding in somebody else's plane, right? Okay. Um, next is, this is for the evening routine. So it's, it's get eight hours of sleep, determine what you're going to wear the next day, and lay it out. Um, brush your teeth. Take off your makeup. Wash your face, put on a little moisturizer, get your PJs on. You know, I haven't mentioned bathing or, or, or showering, but that's up to you when you want to put that in. Um, but get this done every night. And if the earlier you do it after dinner, if there's no place to go, the easier it is. It's the same situation as when you do your before the, before, uh, the morning routine before the family. Because when you do it before the family, you can control things. And the same thing when you do it before the family in the evening, you are not going to be falling asleep on the couch with your makeup on and dirty feet and, and walking like the living dead to your bed. You're going to have a clean face and clean teeth and clean feet and clean PJs and the clean sheets, and it's just a much better nice night's rest, and that may be why you're not sleeping so well. All right, so once you get your evening routine done, let's get the kiddos done. Now, you might not want to do the whole thing. Maybe you need to leave some clothes on. You want to put your PJs on at the last minute. That's fine. Um, but kind of get yourself prepped for the evening and then go ahead and do the little children's evening routine. The evening routine for children would be, let's clean up all the toys in the living room or, or games or whatever, and then go in your bedroom and pick up four things and find a home for those things and put them in their home. Just four things. Then brush your teeth, take a bath, put your dirty clothes in the basket, put on your pajamas when you get out of the tub, uh, if it's a little girl, we have to spray her hair and comb it if it's long and tangly. Um, get a book, and then mom and dad, mom or dad, will read a story, and then go to bed. And the great thing about little kids is, besides the greatness of little kids in general, but the really great thing about little kids at the end of the day is, they need 10 hours of sleep. And if they're toddlers or teenagers, they need 12 hours of sleep because their body is growing rapidly and they need that time to rest so their body will grow because that's when your body grows, when you sleep. So when you have a little child and they, they're going, going, going all day long and you can get them in bed and you've got two, one and a half to two hours to yourself with your husband, that's wonderful. That's just a blessed little gift at the end of the day. So little kids have their routines and you know what? Kids thrive on routine and so do you. So these are your routines, your morning routine, your, your laundry routine, your paper routine, 
your after dinner routine and your before bed routine. Now again, you're the CEO of your home, you can add things to this. Maybe you, like I said, want to do some meditation or read your Bible or do some yoga or whatever it is that you do. Put it in there. Just make sure it's not overwhelming and that it's manageable and that you can do it. Okay, that's the routines. Let's go on really quickly to what is the basic weekly plan? Write this down. Basic weekly plan, Monday, weekly home blessing hour. Tuesday, free day, F-R-E-E, -E, free. Wednesday, planning and desk day. Thursday, car, I mean Thursday, errand day, sorry. Friday, car and purse day. Saturday, family fun day. And Sunday is Renew Your Spirit Day. So of those seven days, four require action. The first that requires action is Monday, Weekly Home Blessing Hour. Yes, we're going to clean your home in one hour with a weekly blessing. And here's what you do. I will link a, a weekly, weekly home blessing up here so you can watch it. But in the meantime, here's what it is. Strip your bed, put the sheets in the wash. That's step one. Step two. Dust. We're not dusting by taking everything off and getting out the pledge. No, no, no. That's cleaning. We're going to take something like a Swiffer duster, something fluffy, or the beautiful Fly Lady um, feather duster, which I love. I've had mine for years and years. A super investment, and they are fabulous. But anyway, dust without moving anything around. Just dust. And you're going to get the each one of these steps, by the way, is between six and ten minutes for the whole house. You are you are pumping. You're going quick. You're just hitting it. We are not doing perfection here. We are blessing our house. So after you dust, you, you strip the bed and wash the sheets, you've dusted. Next thing is you're going to take a, a microfiber towel. You can buy them at the Dollar Tree. You know, there are really, really nice ones out there, but you can get inexpensive ones. Get one wet, one dry. Go to your bathroom, look at the spots on the mirror, and just wipe the spots really quick and dry it. We're not doing the whole mirror with Windex. We're just getting little spots. If you have a sliding glass door, you've got a dog with puppy nose prints, get that off. If you've got a glass table in the, in the dining room or the living room, get the little spots off. We're not doing the whole thing. No need to do the bedroom mirror because you haven't been spotting it up, hopefully. So this is really a quick thing. So that's three things. The fourth thing, empty all the little garbage cans in your house. Just pull out the liners and throw them outside in the garbage. Take the one out of the kitchen too, the big one. Then reline them. So that's done. Six to ten minutes. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do any hard surfaces of floors. So we're going to either, now we're not counting the tile, okay? This is not counting the, I'm not saying not counting the tile. We're not doing the kitchen or the bathrooms right now. We're just talking about the rest of the living spaces. And um, we're talking about living spaces, your bedroom and the living spaces, not the children's rooms right now, okay? So if it's if you have all hardwood floors or laminate floors or pergo floors, then you're going to run through the house with a dust mop zoop, as quickly as you can, six to ten minutes, it's all done. If you have half pergo and half or half wood and half uh, carpet, then you're going to vacuum half of it, and that's just in the walkways, just the places that you can see where people have been walking, not the whole thing. We're not making beautiful lines. We're not avoiding stepping on it when we're not backing out and doing that little perfection thing. I know you because I am you. So you're just going to quickly do around, like in the bedroom, around the bed and into the doorway. That's it. And then in the living room, in front of the couch, in front of the doorway, in front of the rocking chair, whatever, um, in front of the sliding glass door. So you're going to do that real quick. If you have um, all carpet, then, then you're going to do it. But you've got six to ten minutes to get it all done. So split your rooms up. If it takes two minutes a room, it takes two minutes a room. When your two minutes is up, stop. Go to the next room quick, quick, quick. Okay. Next, or one minute a room. Next, we're going to do the little kitchen and the bathrooms. These are going to be mopped. So you need to sweep them real quick, and then we won't even count that. But you want to get any hair or icky stuff up so that when you mop, you're not rubbing that around. Okay, so that's not part of the plan, but it's part of my plan. So take one minute and just, or take the vacuum, suck it up real quick. Then mop the kitchen, but not the whole giant kitchen. In front of the sink, in front of the stove, in front of the fridge, in front of the dishwasher, in front of the pantry, and into the entryway. If you have little kiddos, around the table, but not under the table, not in the big main spaces. And then run to the bathroom. Tiny bathrooms, you can do the whole floor. 
big gigantic bathrooms you just do in front of the sink we're using hair products and around the toilet or in front of the tub okay that's it that's it that is the entire weekly home blessing hour and the most wonderful part of it is if you have children that are a little bit older you can delegate these little six to ten minute pro projects so it can all be done during the week by them which is not a punishment it's a fun thing for them to do and it helps get the house neat so we can have more time to plan together to be together to play together I always say why did you have a family if not to love them and be with them and enjoy them it's not about cleaning your house it's about enjoying your family okay um, so that is the the Day one. Day two is a free day. That means you don't have anything to do that day besides routines because routines are six days or seven days a week. Okay, on Wednesday, that's your planning and desk day. This means that you're going to look in your refrigerator, give it a little blessing, just wipe up the grape jelly, maybe the milk circle, and then throw out all the wilted stuff and the stuff that's been in containers for more than three days. You know, those need to go. And then take stock. What do I have in there? What can I use? Is there a half a chicken? You can make some chicken salad today. Look in the freezer. What do you have? Look in the pantry. What do you have? From that, make your menu. Make a menu for the next week, seven days. Then make a grocery list based on what you're missing from that menu. So make a list of what you have. Make a menu from what you have and a grocery list from what you don't have. On that day, you're also going to balance your checkbook. Take care of your action items. This is your planning day. You're not doing anything else besides your, your routines, which are going to happen every day, no matter what, like brushing your teeth. Okay, And then, um, and then on Thursday, you're going to do your errands. And that's, um, you're going to take all the stuff in the trunk that you've been collecting all week to give away at Goodwill or wherever you're going to take it, DI or the women's ministries or whatever, take it there. Maybe go to the library. Maybe your children are on the um, reading program for the summer and get some books for them. Go to the grocery store. Take your time. When you get home on that day, no fancy meal, a little light meal because you're going to take or a crock pot meal. You want to take the time to really prep your groceries like you have it in your mind. When you buy that giant thing of thighs and leg quarters, your idea was not to throw it into the refrigerator and let it sit there for three days. Your idea was. I'm going to package this up in sets of two and put it in the Ziploc bags that I bought for the freezer and write on it with a Sharpie marker and put it in the freezer. Well, today you really have time to do that. So don't wait to grocery shop to the end of the day. Get it done. As soon as you get your basic weekly house, I mean, as soon as you get your um, routines done, go grocery shopping. And then once you've got that done, prep your fruit, prep your vegetables, have things ready for the week, chop some things up, wash some things up so things are easy to grab and you'll be a healthier eater that way as well. All right, that's Thursday. Friday is clean your car and purse day. That means take a bag to the car and take out all the garbage, everything that's in there that doesn't belong in a car. Anything that I say can become an unidentified flying object if you slam on the brakes. You don't want things, your son's cleat hitting you in the back of the head. So get everything out of the car. And then um, throw the trash away and put everything in its home. You don't have to clean the car. Just get that out. And then dump your purse out and put everything back in that you want to keep. Everything that migrated to your purse goes into its home. I had five tubes in one week. I had five tubes of lipstick in my purse. You know, it just happens. And then the little Kleenexes and little parts and things go in the garbage. Okay? That is Friday. All right. Saturday on the basic weekly plan is family fun day so there's no really activity on that day that you have to work at it's fun day you want to get everything done during the week so you can enjoy your family if you're a payroll fly baby I will be addressing that in those daily videos because it's not possible well for me it was not possible to do the things that the at-home fly babies are doing but I did it on the weekend and a little bit in the evening and sometimes on my lunch hour nothing hard because I am not high energy after the morning so I won't expect that of you either. All right, then Sunday is Renew Your Spirit Day. And when you're organized, you know, maybe you haven't been going to church because you never have clean clothes and the kids won't get dressed and, you know, they haven't had a good night's sleep and nobody ate a good dinner. And, you know, when you have your house clean, the clothes laid out for church the next day, you've talked about it with the family, you've incentivized the children, is that a word, 
with donuts after church, whatever, that we're going to go to church. You get up and go to church, man, it feels great. Come home and you have a roast and you enjoy your day with your family, play board games, go for a ride, go for a swim, go to the duck pond, whatever. As a family, that is a wonderful thing to do. I know you did that a lot yesterday too, um, but this is just a real relaxing day, okay? All right, that's it for the basic weekly plan. We're done. Now, let's go into zones. When you have built your your uh, basic routines and your basic weekly plan, They're your routines and your basic weekly plan, the next thing we're going to do, once you feel comfortable with that, is move to zones. And zone cleaning and zone decluttering is what we're about to do. So there are five zones. Zone one is the entryway. The, that's like the, that is like the front door, the sidewalk to the front door, the patio or the porch, uh, and then inside in the foyer, and then the dining room. That's zone one. Zone two is the kitchen. Zone three is the main bathroom. Usually that's the one I would say that guests would use when they come in. And one other room. <clears throat> Pardon me. That would be a room that nobody, quote, lives in, like the laundry room, the garage, the basement, the attic, the guest room. That's the other room. And then on zone four, that's your master bedroom, master bathroom, and master closet. Zone five is the living room. Okay, those are the basic areas. You are the CEO of your home. You know if you don't have some of those rooms or you have a million more rooms, then you figure out your zones. But it's five basic zones, okay? And for me, like I don't do the dining room with the with the with zone one. I do that with my living room, zone five, because it's a living room, dining room combination. And I don't have a dining room near the front door. So that's what works for me. All right, so what we're going to do in the zones is very, very simple. You go to your zone, and for if it's cluttered, which generally they are in the beginning, just start on one part, and like by the door, and work your way around the room in 15-minute increments, 15 minutes a day. I know it will get done. It will. Don't freak out and say it'll never get done. How often are you cleaning it now? How often are you decluttering it now? Right? Okay. So... 15 minutes, you have to stay in place. If it means nail your foot to the floor, not literally, figuratively, get three containers, one for throw away, one for put away, one for give away. Turn on some music or do something to make it fun. Remember our four Fs? Do it first. So it's the first thing you do after you do your basic weekly plan. So do it first. Do it fast. We're going to go quick, 15 minutes. Make it fun. Turn on some music. Listen to a book on tape. And watch a video or listen to a movie that you've seen before so you can picture it in your head. And then finish, finish what you started. All right, so here's what I mean by that. For 15 minutes, you're going to declutter. You're going to be making quick mental decisions, not emotional decisions. Throw away, put away, give away. You're going to put the things in the three boxes or bo containers. Ding, your timer's going to go off. That's 15 minutes. Now you're going to finish the process by taking the garbage outside to the big garbage. Get it out of the house. It will reassimilate if you don't get it out. Take your giveaway to the trunk. Same story. It will reassimilate if you don't get it out. And then take the rest and assign it homes and put it away. Now, if your house is very cluttered, you won't have room for these things and other rooms that they belong. This belongs in my bedroom, but I don't have any room. Then put a box in that room and put those things in the box until we get to the bedroom and make room for it. Okay? If you don't have clutter or you've worked on this room enough so that there's no clutter, then you're going to do, during the week, four things in that room. So let's say it's the living room and there's no more clutter. doesn't matter if the other zones are still cluttered. You've gotten to the point where the living room is not, is not cluttered. So you're going to do four things. So I'll give you some examples. Vacuum. It, let's say it's carpeted. Vacuum the whole floor, including under the furniture and behind the furniture. That's one. Polish all the furniture with pledge. Take everything off and polish. Um, wipe down the, the baseboards. And um, clean under the, cushion the cushions on the couch. All right, that's four things that you've done. Deep cleaned in that room for this month. You're going to do it only during this week. You're going to do it one thing a day for four days. Monday, Tuesday's your free day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's it. Saturday, I just want you to do... Your, your routines and have fun with your family. 
If you're a payroll fly baby, then you may have to do three hours on Saturday max. Your weekly home blessing hour, if you have to do it all alone, it takes an hour. If you can delegate with your family, it could take 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, your grocery shopping, unless you've delegated that, or if you're a high energy person in the end of the day, maybe you bought them on the way home. And the third thing is your zone. So you'll work for an hour max in your zone. All right. So that is it. The three layers of Fly Lady. Routines, once you get those. Basic weekly plan, once you get those. Zones. And we'll be talking about the zones each day in my What to Do videos. All right? So that's it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give it a good try. Um, I want to say now some things that I use as um, ways to think about this. Okay? So one thing is organization. If you look at nature, it's organized. The trees are here, the sand is there, the water's there, the mountains are there, but it's not perfect. It's just organized. And I want you to think about what you want your house to be like once it's done, once it's decluttered. So imagine that a person can come over, they can sit on your couch, and, and they can put their feet up on the couch because they're comfy. It's not too perfect. They don't feel uncomfortable. And when they go to the bathroom and they go in there, you know they're going to have a clean toilet and clean hand towel and soap, and the floor is going to be clean. And if they stay too late and they need to spend the night, you're going to have clean sheets on the guest bed or clean sheets to put on the, on the couch. And there's food in your refrigerator. And when they open the fridge to get a glass of water, it's clean in there. You know, that's what we want. We want a cozy home that gives you a hug when you come home. And right now, if your home is not that, I feel sorry for your little home because it's being ignored. I know a home is an inanimate object, but I like to <laughs> pretend it isn't. And I think the poor little house hasn't had any maintenance or any love in a long time. And when you start loving your house, it's going to love you back. And you're going to end up loving the home that you may despise right now. I promise. And then when you look outside and you see that it's just ratty looking out there, you know, we can use the same thing with our, with our lawns. We can have um, daily routines with our yard. We can have weekly routines. We can have monthly routines or zones. You can divide it all up so that you can plant some little inexpensive zinnia seeds by the front door and suddenly there are flowers. And you have a happy little house instead of a sad little house. So we want our house to look loved, to look cared for, and, and it makes us feel better. It's like riding in a clean car versus riding in a jalopy that's just full of dirty ice cream wrappers and socks. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I want you to think about. All right, the other thing is space. When you walk out, if you've ever gone to the mountains on vacation and you've stood on the side of the mountain and you've looked out over the expanse, what do you do? You go, <sighs> it's just a release because space is what we crave. We crave open spaces. The same if you go to the beach or the ocean and you look at the big ocean or the great lakes or you lay on your back and you look at the stars. Any expanse, the desert, makes you have that release because you need space. Think about what it's like in your house. Is it is it cluttered? Do you feel, you know, or is it a little spacious? You have some room. Think about if you've ever gone to a beautiful hotel room and you've opened the doors and you go, oh, this is so pretty. It's well appointed. There are not too many things around, but it still has the nice things that people like. And then you get in there with your suitcases and your kids and you blow everything up and you the first thing you think of when you look around is let's get out of here, right? That's the difference. All right, then I wanna also have you think about, so I want you to create space in your home. Think about creating space. Now I want to talk to you about the routines and the routines of nature. Since, since the day God created the sun, it has come up in the morning and gone down at night. Come up and gone down. Come up and gone down. It's a routine. And without it, we would have chaos. The moon rises and the moon, does the moon set? Whatever the moon does, fades away <laughs> every single day. And it has phases. And the, the tides rise and the tides you know, are high and the tides are low. And the seasons, the four seasons change. These are the routines of nature and without them, we would have chaos. And here's the coolest thing about it for, for everyone to know. 
because you're going to do your routines in life, life is going to get in the way. But with the sun, when it comes up every day and it goes down every day, it does that every day regardless of tsunami, of fire, of earthquake, of arctic caps melting. It doesn't matter. The sun rises, the sun sets. The sun rises, the sun sets. It's a routine and it creates, it keeps us from having chaos. So you are the sun of your house and you're going to rise and set every day on your routines. And it's going to cause you to have no more chaos. The chaos is so awful. And the, the letters in Fly Lady stand for C, can't, H, have, O, A, anyone, O, over, S syndrome. C, H, A, O, S, can't have anyone over syndrome, chaos. Okay, so we're going to keep chaos at bay by having routines. Those are just some little thoughts. Uh, the one other thought I have is when you have your routines, they're going to be so ingrained. Once you get them ingrained in you, it's going to be like flushing the toilet and washing your hands. It's going to be a decision that you make, quickie, but you don't argue about it. You just do it. And that's the way that your, your routines will be. I promise. I promise. So I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to really know that you are beautiful. Mwah. Bye.